Hello friends, in this video we will be conducting the mononitration of phenol and synthesizing 2-nitrophenol and 4-nitrophenol. For this synthesis you will need 38 grams of phenol, 60 grams of sodium nitrate and 100 grams of 98% sulfuric acid. A 500 ml Erlenmeyer was placed in an ice bath over a hot plate stirrer. A stirring bar was introduced in it and 160 ml of water was added to it. After the water has cooled down to below 10 degrees C, with the stirring turned on, 100 grams of concentrated 98% sulfuric acid is added slowly to the Erlenmeyer. The water and preferably the sulfuric acid should be chilled to below 10 degrees C before attempting this, as the dissolution of concentrated sulfuric acid in water is extremely exothermic, and if the temperature is not adequately controlled, everything would splash out of the flask. Hot sulfuric acid on our body will not be pleasant. Next, 60 grams of sodium nitrate is added to the Erlenmeyer with the help of a powder funnel. The funnel that I use have permanently stained yellow. It is not going to affect the reaction in any manner. The sodium nitrate reacts with dilute sulfuric acid to form nitric acid in situ. You can directly use the nitric acid but this method is much better. While the sodium nitrate is dissolving in the acid and the flask is being cooled down, we will get ready with the phenol. 38 grams of phenol is taken in a 250 ml beaker and 8 ml of water was added to it. Most of the phenol would liquefy and dissolve in water. If anything is left out, gentle heat could be applied so that everything would dissolve and we get a clear solution. Be very careful when handling phenol as it is extremely corrosive and you don't want this concentrated solution to be splashed on your hands. Then it is equipped in a separate tree funnel. It is okay even if the solution doesn't clear up. My preparation went really well even with the milky solution. The separatory funnel was placed on top of the acid mixture and the ice bath was kept during the whole time of addition of the phenol. A thermometer was also placed to monitor the temperature. Temperature should be kept below 20 degrees Celsius. Phenol is dripped slowly and you can see the color inside the flask is very dark red to almost black. Mixture was continuously stirred and the drip rate was adjusted from time to time. The temperature was kept below 20 degrees C all through the addition. Increasing temperature would lead to the formation of side products. The whole addition of phenol took about 30 minutes. Phenols nitrate so rapidly, so mononitration can be achieved only by the use of dilute nitric acid at room temperature. Under these conditions, the concentration of nitronium ion is low and most of the reaction result from nitrosation by the nitrosonium ion NO+, followed by the rapid oxidation to the nitro compound. Some nitrous acid is always present in the solution and this catalyzes the reaction forward. After all the phenol has been added, allow the mixture to stand for one hour with continuous stirring. After one hour, we have this deep red colored solution with black colored chunky tar like material. The mother liquor is drained into a separate beaker. It contains all the unreacted phenol and acid. This mixture is extremely hazardous to health and should be properly disposed. Then the chunky materials were washed a couple of times with cold water. This helps to clear out all the acid from the product. Now the crude product is taken up into a distillation system. The flask is placed in a heating mantle and around 200 ml of water is added to the distilling flask. We will be performing a steam distillation. Separation of ortho and paranitrophenols by steam distillation is possible because the ortho compound contains an intramolecular hydrogen bond between the oxygen of the nitro group and the hydroxyl group in the ring. The para isomer is associated with intermolecular hydrogen bonding. So, ortho nitrophenol will distill over with water 
and the paranitrophenol would remain in the distilling flask. Orthonitrophenol has a bright yellow color so it is very easily understandable here. We keep the distillation continuing until all the yellow color disappears from the condenser. Sometimes solid orthonitrophenol gets crystallized on the walls of the condenser and even in the distilling head. To make that go into the receiving flask, just stop the water circulation in the condenser. This will warm up the condenser column, liquefying the crystals. The receiving flask containing orthonitrophenol is kept in the refrigerator overnight. The distilling flask was let to stand for few minutes. The maximum possible liquid from the top is decanted into a beaker. This contains paranitrophenol. This beaker is also placed into the refrigerator. The next day, both the beaker and the flask have crystals in them. First I filter the orthonitrophenol. It has some nice yellow crystals in it. The flask was washed with a little bit of cold water to transfer everything to the Buchner funnel. This is the orthonitrophenol that I obtained. It was then transferred to a vacuum desiccator to dry. Next I take the paranitrophenol crystals and transfer them to the Buchner funnel. Filtration was done and the crystals were white, but lots of impurities were present. So I decided to recrystallize it from around 60 ml of 2% hydrochloric acid. The paranitrophenol dissolves very quickly in hydrochloric acid. Now activated carbon is dumped in it. The solution was boiled for few minutes and then filtered hot to remove the carbon. Filtrate was much pure. It was put inside the fridge for few hours. Then the crystals formed were filtered. Now we have much purer white crystals. It was scraped from the funnel and transferred to a bottle. Here we have the ortho and the paranitrophenol side to side. Both the products are of very good quality. The final yield of orthonitrophenol was approximately 10 grams. The paranitrophenol was approximately 2 grams. As per the literature, the yield of orthonitrophenol is 11.8 grams and the yield of paranitrophenol is 7.8 grams. The yield of paranitrophenol that I got was very low compared to the yield as per the literature. One of the main reasons for the low yield is that I decanted the clear solution and the chunky material was left behind. There was lot of paranitrophenol crystals stuck inside the chunky tar like material. That is one of the main reasons for this terrible yield. But that is not going to be a problem because this reaction was to demonstrate the synthesis of orthonitrophenol and paranitrophenol and the procedure done to separate them and purify them. That's all in this video. Hope you have enjoyed the video. These are all my Patreon supporters who are financially helping me so that I am able to purchase new equipments and chemicals required for doing new videos. You can also support me via Patreon or PayPal. The links for both of them are given in the description. Once again, thank you for watching. Do subscribe to the channel and click on the bell button so that you will get notified about my future videos. Thank you.